So here is my quick and sweet 3.18 ship based hole stripping guide. I am presenting this guide to you from my time spent in the 3.18 PTU. Now, as with everything in Star Citizen, some of the tips and trips I give in this video can change. This is also my quick and dirty guide as I plan to dive even deeper, potentially publishing a more complete guide in the future. With that said, let's jump right in. As you can see, the table of contents have been on the left. To begin, you will need to know what ships and tools you can use to salvage and in particular, scrape hulls. In 3.18, hull scraping is the only available form of salvaging with more features coming later. At the time of this video, the two ships that you will need in order to participate in this profession is the Drake Vulture or the Aegis Reclaimer. To acquire the Vulture, it is only available for real money. It takes around two months time from a ship's initial release into the game before CIG puts the ship up for sale for Alpha UBC within the game. The Reclaimer has been in the game for a while now, so you should be able to earn one in game today and find it on sale at New Deal at Lorville for roughly 15 million Alpha UBC. Now that you have a capable ship, it's time to prepare to go out and scrape some hulls. Before you leave your location, be sure to bring a multi-tube with a tractor beam attachment. You can generally find these at landing zones, the orbiting space stations, as well as Lagrange points. The reason you will need this is because you will have to move the cargo boxes around in your cargo hold as they are filled with RMC and processed. Now that you are prepared, it's time to take your ship out and for my demonstration, I will show the Drake Vultures process on screen. It's worth noting that the process is identical on the Reclaimer outside of the different layouts of the ships. To give a quick primer, as you scrape hulls, there is a processing unit inside of your ship that as you scrape the hull, it fills up a one SCU cargo box one at a time. Once filled, it will eject the cargo box onto a very short conveyor belt. On the Vulture, you can fill two SCU boxes in one session before having to exit your pilot seat and move the boxes onto the cargo grid manually. The Vulture has one processing unit in the cargo hold of the ship, where the Reclaimer has one processing unit per scraping arm. For clarity's sake, the Reclaimer has two arms that must be operated individually for scraping. Each arm has its own processing unit within the ship. To find wrecks, there are plenty of them found around Lagrange points. And I do mean a lot. You can also find them around asteroid belts like Yella and the Aaron Halo. Unless this is tied to a bug, you almost require no scanning when around Lagrange points as they have been showing up for me on scan automatically once entering the Lagrange point vicinity. The same cannot be said for Yella or planetary or moon surfaces. I have yet to find a wreck on a moon surface, by the way, but in the asteroid belt of Yella, you will need to use your scanner. When using your scanner from a longer distance, you can usually detect the differences between mineable rocks and wrecks by the signature readings on your ship's HUD. You can be confident that you have found a wreck from a distance when you get three different signature readings on scan, RS, IR, and CS. IR is infrared, CS is cross-section. I'm not so sure what RS is. I'm familiar with electromagnetic, but never seen as RS. So if you have any thoughts about that, please share it in the comments section below. Now, the higher the values, the bigger the shipwreck. You can also find special wrecks where the ship is broken into separate sections. Similar to what you see on my screen when I found the 600i parts spread out over a small area. So you found a good wreck and you're ready to dive in. Let's talk about the mechanics of hull scraping. For this section, we will focus on the Vulture. It's worth noting that the mechanics are not very different on the Reclaimer. On the left and right is the properties and details of each of your salvaging arms on the respective sides. 
on the top of the two sections, you will see the two modules you have to choose from. I believe there may be others sold at stores, but I have yet to confirm this myself. For now, each has different properties. When we look at the properties, we have the diameter, speed, and efficiency. The, the diameter is related to the surface area covered by the beam on the target wreck. The speed seems to be relative to how fast the beam itself scrapes the material from the hull. The efficiency, based on my observations, are tied to how much of the scrapable material is wasted as you scrape the hull. When comparing the two modules here, the abrade module seems to cover a wider diameter with slower speed and efficiency. But what is interesting to me is that because the diameter is so much wider than the cinch module, you might think the abrade is faster. But what I have found is that though it may appear to be faster overall, you are also clearing the wreck of scrapable material at a much faster rate. So the yield is less when using the abrade module. This is what I have found in my test at least, but please let me know if your mileage is different. The distance to target seems to simply indicate how close your scraping arms are to the target wreck. I am not sure yet if there is any additional reason or purpose to that reading. In the top of the HUD, you will see the cargo fill rate and the amount of scrapable hull on the highlighted section of the wreck. In the center is the extraction rate. The two circles near the bottom of the HUD indicate how much of the surface area covered by the respective beams consist of valid scrapable materials. What I have noticed is that the extraction rate is a combination of the validity sensors directly below on your HUD, the diameter, speed, and the efficiency values of the module. Again, these are my preliminary observations with the time I have had scraping hulls in the PTU. Please feel free to share your thoughts below in the comment section if you have some different experiences with that. So once you have filled up one SCU of RMC, the processor in the back will finalize that box and move the box onto the short conveyor. Again, you will be able to continue filling one additional box before it becomes required that you manually move the box into the cargo grid. So to move the cargo boxes, you will need that multi-tool mentioned earlier with the tractor beam attachment. You can move the boxes onto the cargo grid and you can go back to the pilot seat to continue your hull scraping session. Once you are all finished or have filled your ship's cargo hold to its capacity, it's time to go sail your RMC. Unlike mining, there is no refining process at this time and you can take your RMC directly to a local TDD to sell your materials. On to some safety tips. If you want to practice good safety, then I either recommend going to the Air and Halo to hull scrape, or if not there, the yellow asteroid belt. Scraping around Lagrange points is an easy button for pirates. So that's all I have for this ship based hull scraping tutorial. Please feel free to check out this other video on your screen right now. Other than that, happy gaming to you and I will see you in the next video.